But before the man could do anything to her, Yuna's phone which was in her pocket started to vibrate, catching his attention instead. Picking it up, Sang Du answers the phone, on the other side was the teacher, threatening him that if he touches a hair on the kids' heads, then he was going to place his own life on the line in order to kill him. But Sang Du wasn't scared at all, teasing his senior and questioning him on why he was saying such threatening things. And then he remembered the fact that he had turned him into a cripple, which was what the teacher was truly worried about. Hearing this, the teacher could only turn angry. He started cursing at Sang Du, who then suggested something. He wanted to place a bet with the teacher about how many pairs of legs would still be intact by the time he reached where they were. He says this as he slowly caresses Yuna's legs. Sang Du even adds that he would be willing to spare the president's son if he guessed correctly, but as he asked the teacher about what he would like to bet on, the student that was with him notices something off. The teacher was actually trembling immensely with fear. Back to where everyone was, the Doko brothers could be heard, shouting out loud and wondering where the kidnapper, Pietro and Yuna were. They even announced their plans to search each room one by one, they even had the time to make fun of Pietro and Yuna, calling them weak for becoming targets. Hearing their voices coming closer, Sang Du tells the teacher to hurry, as he was going to start soon. In the meantime, Yuna was actually calling out to Pietro quietly, but seeing no reaction from him and the fact that his mouth was open, she thought that he was actually sleeping. Thinking about what she should do next, Yuna slowly removes her shoes and socks thinking that there was no other way. She was going to slap Pietro awake with her bare feet, but the moment she came into contact with his face. Pietro responded to her, asking her about what she was doing and revealing that he wasn't even asleep in the first place. Yuna tried to justify her action by saying that she was merely trying to wake him up, but Pietro teases her about how she was going to use her smelly feet. Seeing that they were wide awake, Yuna decided to move on to remove her tied hands by repeatedly doing the same motion as Pietro watched. She tells him to do the same exact thing to get rid of the restraints, but our boy simply showed that his hands were already free which shocks her. It turns out that he had been freed when Sang Du was talking on the phone near them, Pietro was ready to step in the moment something was going to happen. After removing their restraints, Yuna informs Pietro that Sang Du wasn't just a random guy and that this wasn't just a simple kidnapping case as he used to be a part of glory. But Pietro knew all of this. Before leaving to find the Doko brothers and Sang Du, Pietro asks Yuna if she likes gambling and whether she wanted to make a bet with him, just like Sang Du did with the teacher. We now turn to the Doko brothers, who were talking to someone, calling him a normal office worker who was quite gutsy. They gave the stranger a chance to end things here. It turns out to be Sang Du who they were talking to as they asked him where the president's son was. Hearing how they insulted him, Sang Du was pissed off but he still gave the brothers a chance by offering them a bet. Hearing that, the brothers looked at one another and decided to accept the bet without hesitation. It turns out that the phone call hasn't ended as the teacher was seen driving at a fast speed, he could hear that Sang Du was offering the Doko brothers everything they wanted if they win. But the teacher didn't want them to accept the bet at all, as none of them could win the bet. Reaching to his back, Sang Du pulls out two massive blades, telling the brothers that if they lose the bet, then they would each give him one of their legs. Even after seeing the massive blades, the Doko brothers weren't bothered by it at all, rather they were getting excited after seeing this sexy side of Sang Du. After all, they thought he was just a normal office worker. In response to the blades, the brothers ripped their shirts off, revealing their muscular bodies and swearing that Sang Du was going to end up in a wheelchair from tomorrow onwards. But something else happens, one of the blades Sang Du pulled out was thrown to the brothers. He tells them that bets were only more fun when the conditions were fair. Picking out the blade was hung, he rushes in for the kill straight away, telling Sang Du that giving him a blade was a huge mistake. As he entered into a knife fight with Sang Du, it's revealed that Hung was actually the number one knight fighter of the Divine Honor High School. As they continued to battle it out, Hung was thinking to himself that Sang Du wasn't all that great, since they were using the same knives, he could feel that he was lacking. Hung hadn't done any critical strikes, but he was sure that the damage he was dealing was going to stack up, meaning that the longer the fight goes on, the higher his chances of winning. But then, he narrowly dodges one of Sang Du's knife attacks, which left a cut on his chin, making him realize something. Looking closely at Sang Du's knife attacks, Hung was sure that they were using the same knives. But as they clashed their blades with one another, Hung takes the chance to slip away slightly, which Sang Du notices. His brother also notices that he had backed away from the fight. So Hung took a moment to look at his own knife, realizing what was wrong with it. It turns out that his knife had no edge to it at all, which brings a smile to Sang Du's face after being caught. After discovering that fact, Pietro and Yuna finally arrived 
offering their help in the fight. But Hung raises his arm, shouting at the two of them to not interfere as this was their fight. They were sure that if they couldn't win, then it meant that Pietro and Yuna couldn't as well. So the brothers suggested to them to just stand there and watch. Hung turns to ask Jay if he agrees which he does. After all, the boys were determined since Sang Du didn't know what their motives were behind this fight. In a flashback of the brothers' past, we are introduced to the last hurdle to complete the training at the orphanage which was called Hell Month. Deep in a jungle, instead of water and food, the only supplies they were given was a pistol and a single bullet. In a place where there were thousands of wild beasts, the children had to do whatever they could to survive. The way the bullet was used in many different types of situations, for hunting, for betraying a friend and even using it on yourself. But the Doko brothers refused to give in, combining their strengths to hunt together, and instead of dying, they were desperately trying to survive. They had saved their bullets till the very end, as they instinctively knew that one day, two of their bullets were going to determine their fates. After the hell month had finished, they found out that out of the 181 people of the 58th generation of the orphanage, only the two of them had survived. That was when they heard a shocking story, about a young boy of the same age, who later became known as Disciple Pietro, who left an unbeatable record. In the 58 years of history of glory, he was the only person to never use the bullet and survive. With that, the brothers had spent 10 years of their lives, trying to become like Pietro, to become the very best. Licking their lips and lunging forward with great speed, the Doko brothers went in for the kill, as they planned to use Sang Du as a stepping stone to their success. Jay was the first to make contact, grabbing onto Sang Du's waist, he immediately calls out to his brother, who uses a single arm on his body to leap high into the air. Telling Sang Du that he was going to regret giving him a knife as he goes in for the kill. But Sang Du wasn't afraid of their tactics at all, he even decided that instead of a leg, he was going to cut off their arm instead, he said this while grabbing onto Hung's arm before his knife could reach him. Seeing that his plan to cut Sang Du had failed, Hung uses the same move that the Winter Soldier used against Captain America. He drops the knife and grabs it with his other hand, this time, he was going to stab him. But before he could do that, Sang Du laughed at the fact that he wanted to become like Pietro, just as shards of the blade shattered in front of Hung's eyes. He was stunned, he couldn't believe that Sang Du had managed to destroy the knife in just those few seconds. The weapon Sang Du was widling is called a kukri, a Nepalese style machete. Seeing the change in pace of the fight, Pietro stood in front of Yuna as Sang Du revealed that his knife weighs three times more than your average dagger, and that he had trained with it his entire life. He continues to say that his machete was faster than a knife and heavier than an axe. Which made it the perfect murder weapon for him. It turns out that Sang Du, after leaving Glory, had an estimated rank of A but the brothers continued to charge towards Sang Du, not believing a single word he said. Sang Du too, rushes in to meet them. Within a few seconds, he had struck the brothers multiple times, breaking and snapping various parts of their bodies as they twisted in the air. Before they were knocked out, they whispered to Pietro and Yuna to run away quickly. Yuna shouted their names, but Sang Du tells her to be quiet, revealing that the brothers were still alive as he wouldn't kill them when they were just children. With a smile on his face, Sang Du wasn't yet done with the brothers as he was going to collect his winnings from the bet they made. He walked towards Hung, swinging his machete high into the air, he declared to everyone that he was going to take a leg from each of them. The teacher was still speeding towards their location, hearing about what Sang Du was going to do to the children, the teacher begged for him to stop, even offering his own leg in exchange. Yuna started to panic, shouting at him to stop too, knowing that at his current rate, Sang Du was really going to cut the Doko brothers' legs. This is when Pietro finally steps in. Shall we make a bet? asked Pietro, catching the attention of Sang Du. He confidently walks towards Sang Du, upping the stakes by doubling it. Pietro was offering two legs and even his arms, and if Sang Du wanted, he could also take his neck. Sang Du could only find Pietro funny, and agreed to his terms regarding the bet straight away. Just like with the brothers, Sang Du tosses his a machete. Repeating the same words from before, that bets were more fun when the conditions are fair, and also, he knew that Pietro needed a weapon as well. But Yuna knew that the knife was off, and tried to warn Pietro about it. The scene then changes to a flowery artwork as Pietro declines Sang Du's knife offer. It turns out that our boy was holding onto a metal cover, decorated with flowers, telling Sang Du that this was all he needed to win. Thanks for watching the latest part from the voice of Manwa. Subscribe for more content and don't forget to comment below what you want to see in the future. Like and share for more.